so that was our first big triumph as a as a kind of group but none of us actually had ever done anything like a self-build site you all kind of had to go through the same thing together like living in a caravan and not having the house finished for years and stuff like that that i think it kind of galvanized us all into a feeling of comradeship and caring about each other i had quite a strong push that actually anything we did on this site should try and lift the the concept around sustainable construction up until that point i wasn't a particularly strong ecological warrior i first got involved with the ecological thing by mixing with people like barb and jackson on site who did have very strong ecological point of view we really wanted to not only create affordable routes to people having a home we also set up training around energy efficiency and um, low impact design that is our sole heat source in the house that fire you can build a house for less than a hundred thousand it's something that could be done with the people who are going to live there in mind i do remember while it was being built mike's quite particular about details and things like that whereas i just want to to get in there and and you know start cooking the dinner and get on with it and and he'd take a long time making sure everything was dead right now when i go to do something like switch something on and i think oh, it was really really good the way he set that in there and put it there and not there because he thought about it and we work well together barb we we tend to joke about it barb does the bent lines i do the straight lines so <laughs> i've been here um, seven years next month and um, when my husband died, um, my son said to me, come and live near one of us, Mum. So I chose Bristol, <laughs> basically because I could afford um, to come here because I had the opportunity to do this self-finish in this amazing building. that was originally an office block, an old office block from the 60s, um, and that was the remaining derelict building on the yard. We made six flats, um, with the ground floor having a community room and three separate work units. We've got the community hub, the Wild Goose Space, which is a space that people use for events, uh, weddings, parties. We wanted to build a community. And I think if you get that right, if you put people first, my feeling is that the other things will naturally come along when we were doing the foundations and various other things. All we had to do is say, oh, we've got tons of cement coming tomorrow can you come in help us pour it and so a dozen people would just come over and help i think the original aim of, of everyone that built was to have um, the security of owning a home and um, possibly raising a family so we moved here eight years ago now we kind of knew this area and i remember seeing this very house being built because it was kind of the first one to go up and i remember sort of seeing it thinking wow wouldn't it be amazing to live there someday it was the house it was the area it was the only house that we visited and looked at and then as we were leaving our daughter was in floods of tears because she wanted to stay and play on the green and play with all the toys out there i think it's a pretty idyllic childhood for them a wonderful couple have come into the yard who are my age. So they moved to, to be in amongst um, all the young people. It's just a, a, a lovely atmosphere of, um, I don't know, togetherness and, and, and future. Whereas when you do get older and you are just with older people, you know, you tend to think, well, don't keep talking about the past. You know, there's a lot of future still. Maybe not for the individual, but there is for everybody. Now, the problem with the change in this area is this was a very, very cheap area, but it's become an incredibly desirable area now. Uh, and to go along with that, the house prices have gone up massively. The cost of houses, and I don't think this is just here, this is just everywhere, you know, is, is now so high that some people who you would want to be able to live in this sort of community, it's, it's out of their reach. It, it just makes, you know, the rich richer and the poor poorer and it means that that young people don't get the opportunity to buy and you just think oh that's the way we do it we rent so we just give a landlord money all the time when we could be you know buying a little bit of our own we've got to get 
you know the the sort of Tory idea that um, it's all about money and stuff out of the equation and and shift the balance to creating such a nice place that you want to stay there you don't want to sell up and move on and make more money somewhere else I personally think community housing is a way that we need to shift as quickly as possible because it empowers and we get homes that people want and we get soulful communities rather than sort of inert kind of boxes that people live in. All of us, you know, we're all of that mind that um, it's the way forward. Let's not worry about not getting on with our neighbours or our European friends or, or that. Let's worry about planet and the whole of humanity. And then we all do think like that, so it's rather nice to be in a like-minded place. Sometimes stopping and thinking, wow, you know, we built this home is, is an amazing thing. And I think that is what's driven the work that we now do around trying to enable more projects and the work that we've done through Commotive. I mean, lots of people don't realise it's here and kind of, yeah, um, it's a little sort of village in the city sometimes, <laughs> feels like. It's like there's so much going on, really, in this little bowl. It just all adds to the fullness. So we are, we feel so blessed, really. Can't say that enough, how blessed we feel to be here.